The Iconian Emperor sneered down at the primitive blue planet called Earth, knowing he would soon enslave every living creature on it. His massive alien dreadnought, the Harbinger, blotted out the sun as it loomed in low orbit. Emperor Vortis, Grandmaster of the Galactic Chess Federation, broadcast a message heard by every human. People of Earth, for centuries we Iconians have watched you. Your chess skills have impressed us. We challenge your greatest player to a match for your planet's fate. Win and Earth joins our galactic empire. Lose and you will all be conquered and enslaved. Panic gripped the world. Governments united to desperately search for the best chess player. They found him in Donald Johnson, 25, a prodigy with an undefeated record and IQ of 200. His aggressive, unorthodox style earned him the nickname The Maverick. Now the fate of billions rested on Donald's young shoulders. He had just 24 hours to prepare for the most important game in human history. Poring over advanced alien chess strategies, he had to win. Losing meant doom for all mankind. Donald sat hunched over a chessboard in the small, dingy safe house the world governments had secured for him. Printouts of Iconian chess strategies were scattered across the table. He had just 18 hours left to absorb as much of this alien knowledge as his brain could handle before the fateful match. A soft knock at the door jolted him out of his studies. Donald opened it to find a cloaked figure standing there. The mysterious man lowered his hood, revealing pale blue skin and the ridged forehead, characteristic of an Iconian. "'I am Alexander,' the alien said. "'I come with a warning and an offer.' Donald tensed. How do I know this isn't a trick? You don't. But if you want any hope of saving your species, hear me out. Alexander stepped inside and shut the door. I was once a member of the Iconian Chess Academy. I know the Emperor better than anyone. He's never lost a game of galactic chess. This challenge is a trap he's used time and again to enslave worlds. A chill ran down Donald's spine. Had Earth's defeat been inevitable from the start? Why are you telling me this? Alexander fixed him with the intense stare. Because I can teach you how to win. I can show you Iconian chess strategies no human has ever seen. But it will come at great personal cost to you. Donald swallowed hard. The fate of billions hung in the balance. His own comfort was a small price to pay. I'll do whatever it takes. And so began the most grueling eighteen hours of Donald's life. Alexander drilled him mercilessly on gambits and endgames, on moves that seemed to defy all logic. They played game after punishing game. Donald's head pounded and his vision blurred, but still Alexander pushed him harder. Again, the Iconian said coldly as he knocked over Donald's king once more. Your mind is strong, but you must master your emotions. Vortis will exploit any weakness. By the twelfth hour, Donald's suspicions were growing. Alexander clearly had his own agenda, but Donald was in too deep to back out now. He shoved down his doubts and forced himself to focus, pouring every ounce of mental energy into the chessboard before him. With just three hours to go before the match, Alexander finally called a halt. Donald slumped back in his chair, utterly drained. "'You've done well,' Alexander said. "'Better than I could have hoped. Perhaps you do have a chance,' he paused. It's time you knew the truth. Emperor Vortis is my brother. Donald stared at him in shock as Alexander went on. I was exiled from the Empire for defying his tyrannical ways. I've spent centuries plotting my revenge. And you, Donald Johnson, will be the instrument of his downfall. You will defeat Vortis and end his reign of terror over the galaxy. This I swear. Donald's mind reeled. In just a few short hours he would face off against a being of immense power and cunning, with the fate of Earth and the freedom of countless worlds hanging in the balance. Alexander had given him the tools to win, but at what cost? Donald's heart pounded in his chest as he stepped into the vast arena aboard the Harbinger. The Iconian ship's interior was a dizzying blend of sleek metal and pulsing lights, a far cry from the dingy safe house he'd left behind on Earth. Thousands of alien eyes bore into him from the stands, nobles and dignitaries from across the galaxy, all eager to see the primitive human challenger face off against their emperor.
In the center of it all stood the chessboard, a massive holographic display that shimmered with an otherworldly glow. Each piece was represented by a different alien creature, their forms twisting and snarling as they waited for the game to begin. Emperor Vortis himself sat across from Donald, resplendent in his regal attire. The Iconian ruler's pale blue skin seemed to glow under the arena's lights, his ridged forehead furrowed in a condescending smirk as he looked down at his human opponent. "'You've done well to make it this far, Earthling,' Vortis said, his voice booming through the arena. "'But you face the Grand Master of the Galactic Chess Federation now. Prepare to be humbled.' Donald met the Emperor's gaze, his jaw set with determination. He thought of the billions of lives riding on this game, of the countless worlds that had fallen to Iconian conquest before. He couldn't, he wouldn't, let Earth suffer the same fate. The match began with a flurry of moves, Vortis's pieces surging across the board in an aggressive onslaught. But Donald was ready. He employed the unconventional strategies Alexander had drilled into him, sacrificing pieces and luring Vortis into traps the Emperor couldn't seem to anticipate, for the first time in a thousand years, the Grand Master found himself on the defensive. As the game wore on, the arena crackled with tension. Vortis's face contorted with frustration and disbelief as he was forced to adapt to Donald's bizarre tactics. The human pushed forward, his moves growing bolder and more unpredictable with each passing minute. Whispers raced through the Iconian spectators. Could this primitive upstart actually pose a threat to their beloved emperor? It was unthinkable, sacrilegious even. Halfway through the match, Donald saw his chance. With a final daring gambit, he moved his rook into position, putting Vortis's king in check. The emperor's eyes widened in shock as he realized the trap he'd fallen into. A collective gasp rippled through the audience. On the holographic board, Donald's alien rook reared up and let out a triumphant roar. Impossible, Vortis snarled, slamming his fist down on the table. You must have cheated, human. No lesser species could ever outmaneuver me. The Emperor leapt to his feet, his face twisted with rage as he jabbed a finger at Donald. I demand an investigation. Halt the match until we get to the bottom of this. Iconian guards surged forward pulling Donald away from the board as the Emperor continued to shout accusations. Officials swarmed the arena floor, poring over the gameplay footage on hovering screens. In the chaos, Donald's wrist communicator lit up with an incoming message. He glanced down to see Alexander's face, the exiled Iconian's expression grim. Donald, listen to me, Alexander said, his voice tight with urgency. I've hacked into the Harbinger's systems. i found something... Something terrible. Donald's blood ran cold as Alexander continued. The Iconians have been cheating, Donald, for centuries. They've been using advanced AI to ensure their victory in every galactic chess match. That's how they've conquered so many worlds. The human's mind reeled as he processed this revelation. The Iconians' entire empire, their whole identity as benevolent rulers, was built on a lie. And now... The fate of Earth hung in the balance of a rigged game. Donald looked up at the pandemonium unfolding around him, at Vortis raging and the guards closing in. He had to find a way to expose the truth, to finish this game on a level playing field. But the odds had never been more stacked against him. Donald's wrist communicator blinked out, leaving him standing alone amidst the chaos of the arena. The weight of Alexander's revelation pressed down on him, threatening to crush his spirit. But he couldn't let it. Not now. Not when the fate of Earth hung in the balance. He turned to face Emperor Vortis, his voice ringing out clear and strong over the clamor of the crowd. Vortis, I know the truth. The Iconians have been using AI to cheat at galactic chess for centuries. That's how you've enslaved so many worlds. The Emperor's eyes blazed with fury, his fists clenching at his sides. You dare accuse me of cheating, human. I should have you executed for such insolence. But Donald stood his ground, even as the Iconian guards began to close in around him. I demand a fair match, Vortis. No AI, no tricks. Just you and me playing by the rules. Prove to everyone here that you can win without cheating. 
Vortis's jaw clenched, his gaze darting around the arena. The eyes of a thousand galactic dignitaries were upon him, watching, judging. To refuse would be to admit guilt, to lose all credibility in an instant. Very well, he spat, his voice dripping with venom. We will play your way, Earthling, but when I crush you, your planet will suffer for your insolence. The guards backed away as Donald retook his seat at the chessboard. The pieces reset, the holographic creatures snarling and snapping as they returned to their starting positions. And then the match began anew, the arena falling silent save for the hum of the board and the soft clicks of pieces moving across it. Donald could feel the intensity of Vortis's glare boring into him, could sense the barely contained rage simmering beneath the Emperor's skin. But he forced himself to focus on the game, drawing on every ounce of skill and strategy Alexander had drilled into him. The minutes stretched into hours as the two opponents traded moves, their gambits growing ever more complex and daring. Vortis was a formidable player, his centuries of experience evident in every calculated manoeuvre. But Donald matched him at every turn, employing unconventional tactics that left the Emperor visibly unsettled. As they entered the endgame, the tension in the room grew thick enough to cut with a knife. Both kings were in check, teetering on the brink of defeat. The slightest misstep now could spell doom for either side. And then Donald saw it. A chance, a fleeting opportunity that would require a sacrifice. His hand hovered over his queen, the most powerful piece on the board. To give her up now would appear to be a fatal blunder. But appearances could be deceiving. With a deep breath, Donald made his move, sending his queen to her doom. Vortis let out a triumphant cackle, his hand darting out to snatch the piece from the board. Foolish human, the emperor crowed. You've handed me victory on a platter. Donald said nothing, watching as Vortis made his final move with a flourish. The Iconian's king surged forward, ready to claim its prize. And then it was over. In a single brilliant maneuver, Donald's remaining pieces converged on Vortis's king, trapping it in an inescapable checkmate. The Emperor's eyes widened in disbelief as he stared at the board, his victory crumbling to ashes before him. For a long moment, the arena was silent, and then the crowd erupted, a cacophony of shocked gasps and angry shouts. Some of the Iconian nobles were on their feet, demanding Vortis' abdication for his disgrace. Others called for war against Earth, enraged that a primitive species had dared to humiliate their leader. Through it all, Alexander stood at Donald's side, a small smile playing across his lips. You did it, he murmured, clasping the human's shoulder. You beat him, fair and square. Earth is safe. But even as he spoke, Vortis was rising from his seat, his face contorted with rage and humiliation. Guards! he bellowed, jabbing a finger at Donald and Alexander. Execute these two at once. I want their heads on pikes for all to see. The Iconian soldiers surged forward, their weapons aimed squarely at the pair. Donald braced himself for the end, his heart pounding in his chest. And then Alexander was moving, shoving Donald aside and throwing himself in front of the guards. The exiled Iconian's body shuddered as the blaster bolts tore through him, a dozen smoking holes appearing in his chest. Go! Alexander gasped, his voice barely audible over the chaos. Get back to Earth, warn them. The Iconians will come for you now. Donald hesitated a moment longer, his eyes locked on Alexander's fading form. Then he turned and ran, dodging through the panicked crowd as he raced for the Harbinger's hangar bay. Somehow he made it to his ship unscathed, his fingers flying over the controls as he initiated the launch sequence. The human vessel rocketed away from the Iconian dreadnought, streaking towards the distant blue marble of Earth. As he watched the Harbinger shrink behind him, Donald felt a surge of emotions threatening to overwhelm him. Relief at his victory, grief for Alexander's sacrifice, fear for what the future might hold. He had saved his planet from conquest, but at what cost? The Iconian Empire would be coming for Earth now, seeking revenge for their humiliation. And with Alexander gone, humanity had lost its greatest ally in the galaxy. Donald's hands tightened on the controls as he pushed his ship faster, racing towards home. There was no time to waste. 
Earth had to be warned, had to prepare for the storm that was coming. For he knew with a terrible certainty that the true battle for humanity's survival was only just beginning. The nightmares never stopped. Night after night, Donald jerked awake in a cold sweat, Alexander's final moments playing out behind his eyelids in vivid, agonizing detail, the exiled Iconian's body shuddering as the blaster bolts tore through him, the light fading from his eyes as he gasped out his last words. Warn them, the Iconians will come for you now. In the month since his victory over Vortis, Donald had thrown himself into his new role as Earth's champion and ambassador to the galaxy. He sat through endless meetings with world leaders and alien dignitaries, his mind racing as he tried to navigate the treacherous waters of galactic politics. But even as he worked tirelessly to secure Earth's place in the cosmos, he could feel the weight of Alexander's sacrifice bearing down on him, the knowledge that his friend had given his life so that Donald could escape, that Earth could have a fighting chance. It was a debt he knew he could never repay. As the Iconian civil war raged on, Reports began to filter in of a new threat emerging from the shadows, a faction of extremists led by a ruthless warlord named Zoran, who believed that Vortis's defeat was the result of human treachery. They think we cheated, Donald said, his jaw clenching as he read through the latest intelligence reports, that we somehow rigged the game against Vortis, and now they want revenge. The extremists' attacks were brutal and swift, targeting Earth's colonies and allies with advanced weapons and tactics that even the Galactic Chess Federation had never seen before. Entire settlements were wiped out in a matter of hours, their inhabitants slaughtered or taken prisoner. Donald and his team worked around the clock to uncover Zoran's plans, poring over intercepted transmissions and grainy surveillance footage. They sent spies deep into enemy territory, risking everything to gather the intelligence they needed to stay one step ahead. But as the weeks turned into months and the death toll continued to rise, Donald began to realize that they were fighting a losing battle. Zoran was always one step ahead, his forces seemingly able to anticipate their every move. We have to end this, Donald said, his voice tight with exhaustion and frustration. We can't keep playing defense forever, Sooner or later, they'll break through our lines and hit Earth itself. And so, Donald hatched a desperate plan. He would infiltrate Zoran's stronghold, a heavily guarded space station hidden in the depths of Iconian territory. He would find the warlord and confront him directly, no matter the cost. You're insane, his second-in-command said, shaking her head. You'll never make it out of there alive. Donald just smiled grimly. I have to try, for Alexander, for all of us. The space station was a labyrinth of twisting corridors and shadowy alcoves, patrolled by heavily armed guards. Donald moved silently through the darkness, his heart pounding in his chest as he hacked his way through locked doors and disabled security systems. And then he found himself standing face to face with Zoran himself. The warlord was tall and muscular, his pale blue skin crisscrossed with scars, his eyes blazed with hatred as he stared down at Donald. So, he sneered, the great human champion come to face me at last. Donald felt a sudden sickening realization wash over him. He knew those eyes, that sneer, had seen them a thousand times before in his nightmares and his waking hours. You're Vortis's son, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, his true heir. Zoran laughed a harsh grating sound that echoed off the metal walls. Yes, and I will finish what my father started. I will crush humanity beneath my heel and restore the Iconian Empire to its rightful place as the masters of the galaxy. Donald felt a white-hot rage building inside him, threatening to consume him. This man, this twisted, hate-filled creature, was responsible for so much death and suffering. And now he dared to stand there and gloat, to proclaim himself the saviour of his people. I challenge you, Donald said, his voice shaking with barely contained fury, to a game of galactic chess, your life against the safety of Earth and its allies. Zoran's eyes gleamed with malice. You would dare to challenge me, the son of Vortis, the true heir to the Iconian throne? 
Donald met his gaze unflinchingly. I would. The game that followed was unlike any Donald had ever played before. Zoran was a master tactician. His moves fueled by a lifetime of anger and resentment, he lashed out with a ferocity that left Donald reeling, his defences crumbling under the onslaught. But even as the game seemed lost, Donald found himself thinking of Alexander, of the sacrifices he had made, the courage he had shown in the face of impossible odds, and in that moment he knew that he could not let his friend's death be in vain. With a final desperate gambit, Donald made his move. It was a risky play, one that left his own king exposed and vulnerable, but it was the only way to break through Zoran's defences, to strike at the very heart of his strategy. For a moment, the two of them sat in silence, staring at the board in disbelief, and then slowly, inexorably, Zoran's king toppled over, the holographic creature letting out a final, anguished cry as it flickered and died. Donald had won, but at what cost? Zoran let out a howl of rage, his face contorted with fury and despair. You think you've beaten me, human? You think you've won? With a final desperate lunge, he slammed his fist down on a nearby console. A klaxon began to blare, red lights flashing in the darkness. Self-destruct sequence initiated, a cold robotic voice announced. Detonation in T-minus sixty seconds. Donald felt a surge of panic rising up inside him. He turned to run, his heart pounding in his chest as he raced through the twisting corridors of the space station. Behind him, he could hear Zoran's laughter, a mad, cackling sound that seemed to chase him through the darkness. He barely made it to his ship before the station exploded, the shockwave slamming into his hull and sending him tumbling end over end through space. For a long moment, he lay there in the darkness, his body aching and his mind reeling from the horrors he had witnessed. In the aftermath of the conflict, Earth and its allies began the long, slow process of rebuilding. The extremist faction had been shattered, its leaders dead or captured. The Iconian civil war had finally come to an end. The Empire left broken and divided in the wake of Vortis's defeat. Donald was hailed as a hero, his name spoken with reverence and awe by people across the galaxy. But he took no joy in his victory, no solace in the accolades and honours that were heaped upon him. Instead, he retreated from public life, seeking out the quiet corners of the galaxy where he could be alone with his thoughts and his memories. He spent long hours sitting in darkened rooms, staring at holographic chessboards that flickered and danced in the shadows. And always, always he saw Alexander's face, heard his final words echoing in his mind. You did it, you beat him fair and square, Earth is safe. But was it? Was any of them truly safe in a galaxy so full of darkness and danger? Donald closed his eyes, feeling the weight of his choices and the sacrifices of those he loved bearing down upon him, like a crushing weight. The fate of Earth may have been secured, but for him, the true cost of victory was a burden he would carry for the rest of his days. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.